Hi everyone, it's Lonnie. Welcome to Grace Blossoms for you. A little bit of a project today. I had so much paper that I needed to do something with. And so I decided I was just gonna cut a whole bunch of it down. Okay, so some of what I'm doing is making booklets and some of the other thing I'm doing is uh, making writing pads. I'm not too concerned about the ink that is on here. If I find some more uh, writing, I will remove that because it tends to be somewhat of a personal nature, some of it, some of it not. But anyways, I have a ton of paper like this and it collects so quickly. So, Remember that um, faux rice paper that we made? Well, this stuff works really well as a cover. And look, you can see through it then. So what I do It has like natural creases in it, so I can just cut it down these natural folds. You don't have to use a certain size for this. Mine just happens to be um, the width of an eight and a half by 11 so that's this part here and then I was able to save about four inches worth so that's just the size that I was able to rescue from the papers that I had so um, and to not doing anything fancy today I'm not even counting papers although this one's getting a little thick. Just whatever seems right. Because I'm going to staple them. And then it feels too skinny. And then I just fold them in half. Take one of these. And that's going to be too wide, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is straighten it out somewhat. Again, yeah, not a big deal because you not, might not even see it. And then you just decide which you want you to be your friend, which is going to be the back. So there's that. Isn't that pretty? I was happy I had that to work with. Um, and then I think this is just a mixture of green tea in here and some little shreds of paper so I'm just gonna cut off about um, half an inch or so if I can do both at the same time that will be nice And 
then I used my decorative edge scissors. So there's that. And then I have a stapler that has quite a bit of room there. So hopefully, let's see. Okay, it's still not quite wide enough. So what I will do is fold it. I'll have to fold it back later. But just staple it. That works. Didn't quite get it in the middle. Haven't used the stapler very much. Still getting to know all the nuances. So yeah, then you just decide. I'll probably do the staples towards the back. There. There's a lot to be said for notebooks that aren't too pretty because I made my husband a really pretty notebook and you know what? He won't use it because it's too pretty. So there's that. All right, so I have, I mean, you can use any kind of paper. You can use scrapbook paper. You can use um, watercolor paper even. I have an example. I used watercolor paper. I just want to finish up this stuff. I have a really long stapler too, which I'll probably switch to, but it's kind of big. I want to trim that because it's not quite the same thickness all the way to the top. All right, so then Let me try this scissor. I seem to always cut crooked lines with this one. <laughs> yep, I slanted it. So then I have to redo the bottom part and it turned out okay. Alright, so there's that one. I'm going to staple that one later. I'll show you the other ones I have here. Here's what I meant by watercolor. I was going to make a grid. I was going to do some grid art and I didn't get to it by the, you know, I, the longer it sat, the uh, less I wanted to work on it. So um, it just happened to make some really nice covers and I can still doodle on there. This one is scrap of paper. It's not very good, although it was expensive, but it cracked on me. But I'm going to ink that so then it won't be noticeable, like so. So that'll be one. Again, I'll have to do that in my other. This one, I had some scrapbook paper laying around that I had coffee dyed. Uh, sorry, digital. Um, that was a scrapbook paper. This is digital. Then the faux rice paper again and I'm gonna doodle 
on probably just, well, I could do the front and the back, maybe just make the front a little more pronounced. So one of my favorite things, um, you could make it like a notepad too. Oops, just found some writing in this one on one of the sheets. That way, if they're empty, you can gift them. It doesn't have to be anything special, really. I mean, it doesn't have to be fancy in order to make a gift. Sometimes the best gifts are practical and you just... like to use them. Alright, so for this one I'm just gonna make like a plant. A sharpie might work better. at that. It does. It's a little darker. It's a little more pronounced. Doesn't hit everywhere. So there's that. But you could also use um, watercolor paint and just use a liner brush. Pretty sure we all have some kind of paper laying around that we could, I mean, mine happens to be uniform size, but it wouldn't even matter. You could use different sizes and different kinds of paper. It doesn't all have to be the same kind. All right, so that's the booklets. Then for this one, I ended up cutting a whole bunch um, in half so half of eight and a half is four and a quarter all right something like that and then You could either make just a plain paper notepad or what I did with this one, I actually made a, I took a piece of cardstock that I had kind of wrecked and I made somewhat of a spine in there just to cover the thickness and then I doubled back the, the cover and then I put the clamps on here. So what I'm going to do is put glue on where the spine is going to go. This is going to be the spine. So you can use whatever glue you like. That's, you know, it's got to spread out some, so... So I'm just gonna, I use my fingers so that I know that I'm getting it in there. You could use a brush as well. And I do put several coats on and I let it dry between coats. This is actually the first time I'm making it with a front and back cover. I've made them with back covers, but not front covers before. So this will be cool. All right, so that's got one coat on it. And so 
Now what I need to do, sometimes I just move these close to the top, but not touching the top. And then it has to dry between coats. So this will take a few hours at least. So I'll put that to the side and come back and give it another coat later on. So for this one, it's a little thicker. Sometimes I just use some of that um, uh, chipboard from a cereal box or something. Okay, I found the cover of a watercolor paper pad. So it's not so smooth as chipboard, but it's fairly thick. So what I'm gonna do is cut some of this off. If I recall, it needs to be four by four for my project. Four inches that way, four and a quarter that way. So I'll just cut it with my Now with this piece, I don't really want it to show. I could gesso it and then it would be um, covered or I can cover it with something else. I know if I wanted to, This way it'll be thicker, a thicker backing for the paper pad. And the inside will be hidden. So then, I just need strong glue. Want it fairly close to the edge so that it doesn't come apart. And then put it on even, even Steven. And then I'm gonna just take this and flatten it out. Hopefully that'll do for glue. All right, so then you have to be prepared to sacrifice the first page of your notepad in case glue gets on there. All right, so then I just make sure as best as I can that the edge is straight. And 
again, put those things there. And again with the glue. I could have put an extra piece of paper on the back to protect it a little bit, but I will try not to get it on the back. Oops. It's not overly a big deal, but I already know I'm going to take the front one off, but I should have done the same for the back. Oh well. I'll probably end up using this one myself, so. Alright, so same scenario with this one. It's got to dry for a few hours. And then I'll probably apply at least one more coat, perhaps two because it is a little on the thick side so let's see how this one's doing i probably apply another one now i put a little too much on that's okay All right, now I will leave it. The reason I put it so close to the edge is because we want the edges to seal in the glue. So just in case you hadn't made one before, that's how that works. All right, so that is our little project for today. Um, so if you have some spare papers and whatnot laying around, then, you know, now you have another idea of what to do and how to make it useful for you and for others. So there we go. Thanks for joining, and uh, we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.